the initiation. Yeah, it's a little bit. It looks like it's printed on the side of it. This is more than I expected. This is really tough. Well, look what's happening. No, I know. It's rotating this way. That's why I'm wondering if you push down on where John just pushed down. So the top of the block is is further forward than the base. Yeah. Got no This is like crazy. Oh, you can see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, I should have stopped well, a little funny sooner. funny to me is only that right. they're flat you, keep an eye. you tell me when this stops. So they well. lift up like as a wall. Okay. Okay. I think that's... Yeah, do you guys know what I'm looking for? Let me go back. Okay. All right. So we did something different on this side of the experiment versus this side. I wonder if y'all, a lot of smart people in this room, think about what we might have done different on these two sides. Lubricated the base on one side a little bit? Might have done that. If we had, which side would you expect to have lower base lubrication? Our side, I think. The side? No. Okay, the, so the observation is that the front of deformation is further out than here. Yeah. Can you tell me the answer here? Oh, I just thought the cheap paper. Oh, yeah. yeah, this side is definitely smoother. Sandpaper over here. You know, we, I tried to make an effect like this by putting a thick layer of talc Ooh. on the base on one side versus the other. And it didn't appear to make any uh, significant what? difference. And I was wondering if it had more to do with this, in that case, with the internal strength of the, the sand pack. Well, I don't know what the, the talc might not have enough of a reduction in friction, but it also is so small that it gets stuck up in the grain. Yeah, so we, we put mm. down a big, thick. So some of it might have been taken up, but you know, you're talking about a kilogram. Sometimes you have really set point you know, seven and small less than grain point size to get injected up into the structures. Mm. What we've used in the past is graphite powder. Mm -hmm. Which is even lower friction. It, yeah. it, it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, graphite will do it. Yeah, but the problem with graphite is it gets everywhere and everything, <laughs> and it's a huge mess. But it, if you're doing a particular experiment where it's important, then that's... Yeah, and, and then once you get it in there, I mean, when I do use my sand, we have just a, we only put the uh, colored part on the very edge. Same, yeah. So it, that it, I can just pour the sand back into a bucket and good. there's like there's none in there. <laughs> so I don't have to get new sand every time. But if the graphite's in there, I would imagine. No, you gotta just toss it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We're, that's why our sand has become more rainbow esque, you know, <laughs> yeah. because we just yeah. Yeah. mix it in. That's a good idea. <laughs> that's kinda what I wanted to show. I mean if there is a group who wants to play with the sandbox more <laughs> This one. I mean, some, many of you have already have your own. You know. So, for a teaching setup, would you recommend something like this, or something like what Saad has with the pulling the sheet? Well, I, I would say that this is probably better because, just like in, in my big box, you can do the, as Michelle was saying, the side by side experiments, and those are really compelling to students because they can see the difference right in front of them. It's not they don't even have to try to visualize. Well, oh, what did that other experiment do? And it takes a lot of effort out of setting up an experiment, you set it up and there's two differences uh, or the different, whether it's erosion or higher friction or mm. a different material, you do side by side. Yeah, erosion, you can just do that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasting really fast and then crank it again. I find, I, I think it might be my rig a little bit, but I think I, I, I haven't gotten the right, the result I want with the erosion. It's there, but it's real subtle, like, because then what will happen is, Often, the, the, you want to see the wedge grow up here while this one continues. Well, let's, let's see. Yeah. You're, having it, you're having your thrust come out yes, here. Yes, that's what I always seem to have. And I'm, I'm always expecting more of the thrust back here to build. Well, uh, but it is here versus up there. Okay, so uh, when I. I'm actually going to talk on, on, on Friday about glacial erosion and what it turns out, in, in, in at least that example, because it's not in equilibrium with the system, uh, you do reactivate the structures and you do see it, but it's not a lot. And it turns out that you don't have to totally get the, the wedge back into taper or at least a smooth profile. You'll have some uplift and if you don't continue to erode, it's happy to continue on mm. in that new um, uh, equilibrium, if you want to call it that. And that's because you already soft strain softened it out here in the front? Uh, you've already created a better latent zone? Yeah, I mean, that, that's part of it because you do reactivate old structures, but 
But I'm uh, not reactivating the guys back here, yeah. just the one there. Yeah, so, the most but, recently actually. but what actually happens to some degree is that you have more underthrusting. Underthrusting goes on for a longer period of time. You bring the back up in that fashion, and then you continue on as if nothing happened, assuming you don't have continued localized erosion. So that's sort of the difference. Uh, if, as supposed to sort of steady state erosion where what people do with that is, uh, you know, they erode the entire wedge down because they're assuming that that fluvial process is distributed evenly over time uh, over the whole surface. So something that I don't think works very well at all. Some people will try to do extension by simply moving the box back. So I'm moving the box back, and you'll notice all that happens is you get something. So for extension, I really recommend get two of these, take that away glue a rubber sheet. I've got a lifetime supply of rubber over here. If you want to take some with you, you so home, you're welcome to. And, you know, don't take the rubber on here, you know. Where'd you get that? Uh, uh, Mario purchased it. I'm not sure he got, like, 500 yards of latex yards. rubber. That's, that's, that's sort of how I buy things, too. It's like, oh, I, one yard I need, I have 500 yards to be better. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm working my way through it. Yeah, some, I can get it out. And, is that and, the fair band? It's not. So this is um sorry, I'll get out of the way because we're always talking on it. Well it's kind of like what Maddie was talking about with your wax beads. Yeah. So you can't this buy rubber them right here, this is a latex. I do also have the Theraband rubber. Oh moly. That is a yeah, so I have Theraband <laughs> rubber too. The Theraband rubber is easy to come by, and but then you're stuck with the with the typical widths, which is the six uh -huh. inches. That might work for you. You know, it depends on, because that's the whole designing your experiment on thinking about how TheraBand stuff comes in six inch yeah. But if you want something larger, I'll cut you off a piece of wheat. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another plus of this setup, is you can actually do that if you have to, to roll up the Mylar sheet. Can't really oh, that's true. Right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you could... Uh, could well, you I guess you could your, pull a rubber sheet. Could you take, cut your Mylar and put a rubber section in it? Uh, sure, you could do, you could, but uh, I think you'd probably want to start with the entire rubber sheet mm -hmm. and then pull it, it's extended, but uh, then you'd only be doing really half the, you're doing the center of the system and only doing half of it, where you're extending uniformly in one direction. Otherwise, like you were saying, you'd want two cranks to, to have that base.